Today, we're going to be talking about the off-grid cyber deck. How did I come up with it? Did I come up with it? Those are all the questions we're going to be answering in addition to going through some of the user interface that I've designed for it that have allowed it to be very easy for anyone to use. Off-grid cyber deck is based on a four gigabyte Raspberry Pi. It's all open source. All the software on it is open source, meaning that I did not design Kiwix, right? There's a whole other team that designed Kiwix. Rather, what I designed is a very ready to use, easy to use interface that allows you to open Kiwix and let it run its server or open Foxtrot, which is an off-grid GPS navigating app. These are things that on a Linux-based computer, you typically have to compile and run a bunch of commands. I have probably over 160 hours and thousands of lines of code written to make this what it is today. And so that's what we're gonna be talking about. We're gonna be talking about what it is. First off, it's based off of a design by a guy named Jay Dosher. A couple years ago, a guy named Jay Dosher designed a thing called a Raspberry Pi Quick Kit. And it was a design kind of like this that allowed you to put together your own internet in a box. Now, I really liked Jay's design, but I thought that it needed some improvements. You know, namely, I felt like it needed to be able to be used when the box was totally closed, and that's not something that Jay's design had in mind. So that's one of the things that I did that's different from Jay's design. But it started out with an old Pelican 1150 case that I had. It's worth noting that the new Pelican 1150s and the old Pelican 1150s are not the same size because I had to do quite a bit of trimming in order to get Jay's original STL file to fit inside of this Pelican case. So it started here. Then I kind of started to notice some trouble with uh, Jay's design and so I started designing a new one here. And as you can see this new one has holes and it has this sat mount. It just has all kinds of different stuff that led into this. So this is a, this is not a Pelican. I didn't want to drill holes into a Pelican and so I went and bought a Harbor Freight Apache 1800, which is the same size as the old Pelican 1150s. And this design was good, but there was some more improvement that needed to be done on it. And so I went back to the drawing board and redefined it. And what I came up with is what we see here today. So now that we've gone through the history of how I got here a bit, let's talk about this device here. First of all, I want to mention that it's fully IPv6 waterproof, meaning that I wouldn't necessarily go diving with it, but I wouldn't be scared to leave it out in the rain. And later on, I'll show some test videos of me spraying it with the water hose and stuff while working it, but we're not going to do that today. On top here, you have a USB-C 3.0 port that is housed in an IPv6 waterproof fixture. Right, so this is a USB C 3.0, and this can be used for anything. I have it ported and, and designed to be used with the GPS module, and we'll talk about that later. This is an antenna mount, it's completely waterproofed as well. And over here, we have the two power ports, and that's all there is to the exterior of the design. Moving on to the interior, this is it. Now what's different about this than the way Jay had his done is namely that I've routed all of the power points external. So you don't have to plug the power in right here. This is where Jay's power point used to be and now it's an LED light to let you know that it's on. So that's one of the differences in what I've done. I've also taken this keyboard tray and uh, made it a nice platform. Underneath, if you remove the keyboard, there's storage for headphones and it, you know, that type of thing, because it does have a 3.5 millimeter jack for headphones. However, the Raspberry Pi also features Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so you could connect a Bluetooth speaker to it. So, now that we've talked about the exterior, let's go ahead and turn it on. To turn it on, you're gonna want to open up this one. The bottom one is the power port for the Raspberry Pi. When you order this complete from me, it will come with this solar powered 48,000 milliamp hour charging block. Now this should provide approximately 16 hours of battery life to your Raspberry Pi. So you'll want to just take it and plug it in. It does take about eight hours for uh, this to charge via solar, but you can charge it in a few hours at home. So we see the LED light come on, the screen comes up and we'll give it a minute to boot up. Now this is a seven inch Raspberry Pi touchscreen. We are going to be using a mouse for today's video, but you could operate it like a touchscreen. Go ahead and turn the Bluetooth keyboard on. 
and we'll let it power up. Now at this point, I'm going to open up a VNC viewer because I wanna show you guys the VNC capability. Yours will also come with VNC capability. The VNC allows it to be ran uh, while it's closed because if the box is closed, well, how do I operate it? Well, we can do that through VNC. So the way we'll do that is by accessing it through a phone that already has VNC hooked up. Now you could also have VNC running on a computer, uh, another computer, you know, you can have VNC running through anything. VNC is just a, a really easy to use software that allows us to remote access our desktop. So now that we're logged in through our local internet connection, we can just double click CyberWeb. And when we double click CyberWeb, we'll see that we have this URL that pops up right here. It says your library was successfully loaded. Now again, the library is locally hosted on this device. So we'll just open up the web browser and input that IP address. Hit enter. And there it is. So here is our off-grid internet, if you want to call it that. There's a lot on here. A lot of people have been asking about medical and things like that. Yes, it's on here. So I'm not going to go through the entire list of what we have here. Suffice to say that it's enough to rebuild civilization, right? But I'll give you an example. I'll show you how Wikipedia works. So we've opened up Wikipedia here, and we could search anything that we want. So let's search Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi OS. So this is everything we need to know about the Raspberry Pi OS desktop. And we can even follow these hyperlinks into other places. So if we want to know more about Linux, we could click on Linux. And this will tell us that it's a family of open source Unix-like operating systems based on the Linux kernel. So as you can see, Wikipedia functions just like normal Wikipedia functions. You have all your images, all of your hyperlinks work. But what if we wanted to watch a video? Well, that's not that big of a deal either because, again, it's locally hosted. So we really don't have to wait too long for anything to come up. So we can come down here to TED Talks, Survivor's Wisdom. That's an interesting one. And we can listen to this lady talk about how she survived cancer. It's pretty inspirational. Click on the video. And there it is. We can even fast forward through it without having to wait for buffering because, again, it's locally hosted. If we want the subtitles on, we can get subtitles. Now, again, I mentioned the audio does work with this. I'm not going to go into how to connect a 3.5 millimeter cable or connect Bluetooth because we've pretty much all done that before. But just trust me on this. Audio does work. So what about medical? Obviously, that's a pretty important aspect of surviving in the wild is getting uh, medical, right? So here we go. This is everything we need about personal wilderness medical kit, survival and austere medicine, tongue diagnosis in Chinese medicine. When there's no dentist, let's select one of these. Let's select uh, emergency war surgery. And here we go. This is the Army's publication about emergency war surgery. We can get our table of contents here. And let's look at infections. This is everything we need to know about the diagnosis of a wound infection, common uh, microorganisms causing battlefield infections. As you can see, there's pretty much an endless uh, supply of information here that could be helpful. We even have books. With Project Gutenberg, we have over 10,000 books locally hosted. So we just come down here to Project Gutenberg And we can select any one of these books. Let's look up um, Tom Sawyer. The Adventures of Tom Sawyer Complete. There it is. Now we could save this Right, so we could save this to a file and we could read it that way, or we could just scroll through and read it this way. Let's see, what's in chapter three? There we go. Scan pages of Tom Sawyer. So that's a look at the web browsing aspect 
of this device. Another thing is if you need help with the web, I have integrated in here a web help. So let's see, type your name, Jake. Hello, Jake. We're gonna get through this together. Read all of my instructions before taking any action, okay? Press enter when ready. So this will walk you through if you have questions later on. I can't always be there. I may not even be there. So you may wanna know, well, how do I get all this to work? I've written these help instructions in here and they give you a step-by-step -step process in how to access the web, how to get your IP address going. And it, it may seem complicated, but it's all very simple. Really, it's as simple as double-clicking CyberWeb, right? Well, now I want to move to talking about GPS. So GPS help can get us started in that direction. So it says I'm here to locate yourself. No internet is required to use this feature. GPS only works when you have enough satellites locating you to get started. Plug in the GPS dongle included with your kit. I'll wait. So let's open this up. We have our GPS dongle here. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Integrated magnet on the top of the device. Press enter when connected. So this is gonna give us a lot of information about what's necessary to get the uh, actual GPS to connect, right? Now this is gonna run all the programs for you, but if you just double click the other one that doesn't say help, it would also do the same thing. This just gives you more information as to what's going on. So here we go, we've opened GPS, and we're looking at 18 satellites. So 17, so here we go. It's open for us, we have the GPS device connected, and follow my mouse here so you can see that we're looking at 21 satellites but we're not using any a part of that is because i'm sitting inside so it's not getting a good view with the satellites however it has been able to get us our time so if you'll see here it's 1347 or 147 it's getting that time from the gps it has nothing else to get that time from we're not connected to wi-fi and i don't know if you can see it here but it's dead on it's 147 right so something else I want you to look at is where it says status, no fix. Now, we're not getting a fix because we're not using any satellites. But once we use at least four satellites, we'll be able to get a fix. And right here, it'll say 3D fix. It'll also show us our latitude and longitude. And once it shows us our latitude and longitude, that'll be enough for us to open up the next program I'm about to show you, which is Foxtrot, conveniently named NAV. So we'll double click on NAV and we'll execute NAV. And we'll full screen it. So this is NAV. Now NAV has everything that regular Google Maps would have because it uses a Google Maps client. Again, we're completely offline here, so we can look at anything we want to look at. Maybe we want to look at Kroger. We can find a route, and get a route, route planning. Now again, we can only do all of this once we get a GPS fix. So we would have to wait to get a GPS fix in order for it to know where we are and how to get to it. So off-grid maps, there it is. I'm very proud of this feature. This was one of the most important things to me. Now CyberDeck has a few other cool features, namely SDR. So we'll go ahead and execute that, but not before any inserting the SDR dongle. So let's go ahead and remove our GPS device. We'll plug in our SDR device. So there we go, our RTL SDR is in. Again, all of this comes with the full kit. So we'll connect this antenna here. Now the antenna is connected, we will hook it up. Okay, now our SDR is hooked up, so we can execute. Now, this should load this right here, which is our SDR device, so we'll hit start. Now we need to select a frequency to listen to. So I'm going to select FM, and I want to listen to 107.1. So let me just select one of these, and 107. Seven, one. Now, we can select any one of these channels to listen to. FM, FMS, NBFM, AM, lower sideband, upper sideband, dual sideband, and IO. Um, 
I'm not going to do this right now because I don't have audio connected, but if I had audio connected, I could listen to the radio on this, or I could listen to a UHF frequency or an HF frequency. Um, there's all kinds of stuff you can do with SDR. I'm not going to go into SDR too much because there's other videos about SDR and specifically about Cubic SDR, which is the program that I've compiled here. So we'll go ahead and get out of Cubic SDR. We're connected to the internet now, and this feature does require internet to use. So we'll open up stock, we'll execute it, and it says this feature requires an internet connection. Enter the username of the profile you'd like to scan without symbols. So we'll look for me. Hit enter. Now it's going to load all profiles on the internet using my username, Round Guy Square Body. So there we go, checking username Round Guy Square Body on. We should see an imager, an Instagram, a kick, nation states, nation, nation. I don't even have those accounts. Patreon, I definitely don't have a Quizlet. I don't know what Vero is. There's my TikTok. And there we go. We see all 10 results. Now, why do I have this feature on here? Because this helps me check the security of my own name. I can now go through and check these other sites um, that I know for a fact I don't have, such as Quizlet or Nation States Region. I don't even know what that is. So there we go. The processing has been finished. And we'll close out of that. Now again, I just want to show you just for fun. Let's take the USB dongle out and let's close up the entire system. Here it is. I can open up anything that I need to from my phone with it closed. So we'll go to history. We'll go to welcome to Cubic server. And here we go. Here is everything that I have been looking at on my computer, also on my phone. I hope you can now see the value in off-grid CyberDeck. It's very easy to use. I have over 160 hours in compiling and designing this user interface. I'm very proud of it. It makes it very simple for anyone to get into. When I started this whole project, I knew nothing about computer programming or Linux. So I encourage you, if you want to build your own, build your own. But just be ready for the commitment that that takes. If you're not looking for that kind of commitment, you can buy one of mine. And that's what I did it for because honestly, if I had the option to buy one, I probably would have just bought one. So I hope you feel more familiar with CyberDeck and I hope you're looking forward to taking it on your most extreme adventures. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments and be sure to follow me on my YouTube page if you don't already. I'll be doing more tutorials. I'll be talking about Linux coding. Um, I'll be doing a lot on here. So stay tuned. Follow me on Instagram, and you can also follow CyberDeck's Instagram, which is Off Grid CyberDeck on Instagram. Keep up with it there exclusively if you don't really care about my life, but you just want to see more about the CyberDeck. Thank you for watching. That's it.